Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 740 for the 18th of Kislev in a regular year. We have reached the final portion, the final episode in this cycle of the Tanya. Very exciting. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me on this uh, journey. And I'm so looking forward to continuing with all of you for the next cycle when we enter into the new year, into the new year of the Tanya starting tomorrow on Yotez Kislev. And so now in preparation for today's episode, I'm reading today's Tanya, studying today's Tanya. I have to tell you, it felt a little anticlimactic to me because, you know, as you know, we've studied Tanya together this whole year and there's a lot of depth in the Tanya, a lot of really esoteric ideas, uh, really interesting, deep thoughts and everything. And then today's Tanya, is just extremely practical. <laughs> it's not difficult to understand. It's extremely straightforward. Uh, it's uh, it, it doesn't really get into deep Hasidic concepts or anything like that. It's extremely practical. But I think this is actually a really apt conclusion to the Tanya because that's kind of the whole point is like, yes, the Tanya has a lot of really deep esoteric concepts about the soul, about God, about the world, answering a lot of existential questions we have about reality. But at the end of the day, there's always this idea, there's, there's always this this um, this premise in Hasidus and studying Hasidus that we want to bring it down. We want to make it grounded. And that is how the Altar Rebbe concludes the Tanya, is giving really specific and practical directives. Uh, and he focuses on three main areas in uh, in the final essay, this final essay of Kuntras Achron. This is essay nine of Kuntras Achron, the final essay of the Tanya. And the three themes that the Altar Rebbe chooses to address in this final essay are prayer, specifically communal prayer, which was something that he began to address in yesterday's Tanya, uh, learning Torah, also specifically focusing on communal learning Torah, but there is an individual component to it as well, as there is with prayer, obviously, and keeping Shabbos and the importance of keeping Shabbos and kind of getting into a little bit of the deeper um, aspect of keeping Shabbos. So let's just get right into it. And as I mentioned, it's, it's extremely straightforward today. There's not, um, it's not very difficult to understand, which I think is kind of like a nice, light, but yet very grounded way to conclude the Tanya. So the Ultra Rebbe begins this essay actually very strongly with very strong words. In fact, words of rebuke, which are taken from Vaikra, 
chapter 19, verse 17, where it says, which is a very famous citation. It means you shall surely reprove your fellow. And the Gemara adds to this teaching in Bava Metzia, page 31a, a mapamim, even a hundred times. So meaning to say that if you see your fellow doing something wrong, that they sh- he, shouldn't, he or she shouldn't be doing, you are obligated to rebuke them, to tell them, to point it out to them. You're not supposed to just be like live and let live. And you're supposed to do this even a hundred times. So why is the ultra rabbi bringing this up? Because he's taking this personally and he is rebuking his followers now. And he says this, due to this, uh, this dictate of this idea of needing to rebuke your fellow, he said, I can't hold back. And he said, I'm going to plead with you guys. I'm pleading with you out of deep compassion to have pity on your souls and to make sure to be very, very careful, very vigilant when it comes to two things, when it comes to learning Torah and when it comes to the service of the heart, which is prayer, praying with intention, praying with kavana. So he begins by speaking about prayer, by really focusing on prayer and what how, what is the proper way to pray? What, How should, uh, should his followers go about praying? So he says that in congregational prayer, then the congregation, everybody should begin the prayers in unison. It shouldn't be just this like scattered kind of experience of like one person in the corner uh, praying to themselves and then a a few other people kind of like, you know, talking amongst themselves and then starting a little bit later or whatever. It should be a uniform experience and that this uniform experience, how should it happen? It actually needs to be instigated by the person leading the prayers, which is why it's really important to make sure that the person leading the prayers is, is the right person. And he says that the, the reason why this isn't happening is because unfortunately, who do people get to lead the prayers? It's usually just whoever. It's kind of like whoever is willing to do it, whether they're willing to do it out of honor because it's going to feel good for them to be in front of the, it's good for their ego to be leading the prayers or because it's like nobody else wants to do it. So one person's like, okay, fine, I'll do it, you know? And uh, this is, not good, says the altar, but this is not how it should be done. And he wants to fix this. So he says that he's actually establishing a law. So he wants his chassidim to take this really seriously, that from now on, instead of just having like whoever lead the prayers, there need to be fixed individuals. There need to be set individuals that the congregation appoints, maybe by like, a, whether it's, it's like through a lottery, like just like you know, people are randomly chosen for this, or there's a popular vote. So he's giving the congregation the freedom to choose how they want to do this. But ultimately, the, whoever is picked, those are the people, there are a few people who are going to be set for prayers. And there's going to be different days. Like one day, let's say on Sunday, is Moshe is going to do it. On Monday, Shmuel is going to do it or whatever it is. Uh, but they, 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 it needs to be like this is a serious job that they're taking very seriously. And who are these people that should be picked? Like what are the qualifications to be such a person? This is somebody who really articulates their words when they pray. They pray word for word. And they pray at a moderate pace, not too lengthy in their prayers. Because if it's too lengthy, people are going to space out and they're you know not going to pay attention but also not too quickly we spoke about that in a previous episode that it's really important to not pray too quickly but it's better to be more on the longer side and um and to really have these people take their take this uh, position very seriously and he says that then when these people are praying, what they should do is they should actually assemble around them. So it's not enough that just like this leader is praying in an articulate fashion, but they should assemble around them a few people who they are also pray, praying in an audible fashion and not rushing, not whispering, but rather they're you know also articulate. So it's sort of like set this precedent for the rest of the congregation to pray in this more uniform manner. And the ultra says that this is actually, it's not a new thing that he's instituting. This is something that was... Uh, a, it was it was a it was a tradition of the past in many towns that they that they actually had this uh, this system in place and now the ultra rabbit is coming just to renew this and he wants to strengthen this um, this idea and he he really it's it's a very emotional plea here that the ultra rabbit is is pleading for and he actually this is the only words in Yiddish in the entire Torah he says gewalt gewalt like you know like like please like you know he's pleading with his con- with his um followers to do this to the point that he even cites a um cites a quote from a verse from Shmot chapter 6 
Verse 7, which is Adma Tayela Zelanu Lemokesh. How long will this be an obstacle for us? So he's like really pleading with the, with his uh, followers to really follow this idea of taking their communal prayer seriously. And he says, Has it not been enough? All the uh, the tochachot, all the rebukes and all the troubles that they've had. So, you know, obviously these chassidim have not had very easy lives. And this is not the first time the altar is pleading with them about this. So he's like, he's really, really, you know, he's begging his chassidim to, to really uh, listen to him this time and to purify their hearts, to really serve God truthfully. And, and he says, all those who put their hope in God, which is we're assuming is all of his chassidim, to really strengthen and fortify their hearts to do this kind of thing, um, to really take this seriously. So, okay, so that's the section about prayer. That's sort of like part one of today's essay. Now, the altar epic goes on and he talks about uh, studying Torah, specifically the studying of the entire Shas, the entire Talmud. And so this is something many people have this habit of studying the entire Shas, the entire Talmud throughout the year. And so this is something that the Ultra Rabbi wants his, uh, his followers to do, to do this on a communal level. So it's, he's not asking for every single one of his chassadim to com complete the entire shas. That's, that's like a very huge undertaking, but he wants them to split it amongst themselves so that every individual can pick one tractate of the Gemara to study, and that will be their portion, and together they'll have finished the entire Gemara. So the Ultra Rabbi was saying this in kind of like a communal way, that like every community should finish the entire Gemara collectively, but um, some communities, like some towns, had many different shoals in them. Like it was very big communities, so many different shoals. So how should that work? So he said, in that case, every single congregation, like every single shoal, should take this upon themselves to complete the entire Gemara. Like each shoal is considered as its own community. But then uh, if some shoals are bigger than other shoals, right? So let's say if you have like a very small shoal and there's, you know, there's 63 tracts of Gemara. Let's say you have a shoal where you barely get a minion. So that's going to be like a lot of work if there's like 10 men and it's like they have to learn the entire Gemara. So the ultra Rabbi says that the smaller congregations can team up and they actually should team up with larger congregations so that they can together complete the entire Gemara. And the Elder Rabbi says that this is something that is very, again, he's taking it very seriously. He says this is something that should not be changed, uh, should not be varied, and should not be violated. This is something people really should take seriously to complete, to have their congregation complete the entire Shas every year. And then there's an interesting little addition here is he says that in addition to this, each person, each individual person should read the entire Tehillim chapter 119 every week. So those of you familiar with, uh, with Tehillim know that uh, Tehillim 119 is a very long Tehillim, but it's also known to be a very powerful Tehillim, uh, a very strong Tehillim. And so it's something that, that the Altar Rabbi is advising people to, to include together with this learning of the shas on a weekly basis every person should do it perhaps this is just my own thoughts perhaps this was the idea of kind of like combining like um like godliness into the study of gemara like to sort of like remind everybody that it's not just an intellectual study but it's actually something that is um that is that is like linked to to god you know and praising God. And so that's the idea of studying Gemara, studying Shas. So, so far we spoke about the idea of praying and praying and having a good leader to lead the congregations in prayer so that it's a uniform experience. Now we spoke about the idea of the learning, learning Shas, learning, um, the entirety of the Talmud on a yearly basis in a communal way. And now the Ultra Rabbi sh shifts to Shabbos. And the approach that he takes with Shabbos is an interesting one. And he talks about this idea of fasting. He talks about this idea, which we've spoken about in previous parts of the Gemara, that, um, that, you know, not everybody's perfect. Nobody's perfect, really. And we all make mistakes. And one of the remedies for these mistakes that we made, the, the sins that we make is fasting. But uh, but as we've spoken about previously in the Tanya, we're living in a generation where like the amount of fast that we would need to do in order to rectify ourselves from all kinds of different sins is not very realistic. And we're not a, a very strong generation in that sense. So as an alternative here, the Ultra Rabbi actually brings Shabbos. And he says that there's, this teaching in the Gemara, specifically in Masachat Shabbos, page 118b, that anybody who keeps Shabbos as according to the letter of the law is forgiven for all of his sins. So he says that this is the idea of keeping Shabbos. You've got to be specific about this. It's according to the letter of the law, which means that every single person must take it upon themselves to really become an expert in 
learning the laws of Shabbos, like to really take it seriously, to, to learn these laws of Shabbos, because it's, it's not just enough to like, you know, keep Shabbos, like observe the Shabbos, but it's like you, if you keep it according to the law, specifically, that's what absolves you of all your sins. And more than this, says the Alter Rebbe, a person should also be careful on Shabbos not to indulge in idle chatter, God forbid. Um, because as is known, says the Alter Rebbe, according to Kabbalah, every mitzvah has an internal aspect to it and an external aspect to it. So the external aspect of keeping Shabbos is not doing work, like not doing the, the 49 malachos. Uh, you know, just like Hashem, like we're emulating Hashem, Hashem stopped creating the heavens and the earth, right? But what is the internal aspect of keeping Shabbos? So let's think about that. So when Hashem created the world, so there was the overt creation that happened, right? And then uh, on Shabbos, he stopped creating the world. But as we've also spoken about in the Tanya, how is it that Hashem created the world? Hashem created the world through speech. And so then on Shabbos, he, we can think of it as Hashem stopped speaking. Hashem like went back into an, an internal state and he sort of went into this state of being, into this state of just like more contemplative thought. Which is why on Shabbos, really on a positive level, aside from just refraining from doing work, what we're supposed to be doing, actually, what are we actually supposed to be doing is getting into this more meditative state of coming into a state of really focusing on our intention of uh, during our prayers and during our Torah study and really focusing on trying to connect with God. So the way that we can think about this is that in keeping Shabbos, there's kind of two aspects to it. There's the proactive, the positive aspect of keeping Shabbos, and then there's the negative aspect, the refrain or refraining aspect of keeping Shabbos. These two aspects are encompassed in the two words that are often used in describing how we keep Shabbos, namely Zachor Vishamor, to remember and to guard, to keep. So so Zachor, that how is it like just on a practical level that we do Zachor to Shabbos to remember the Shabbos? This is the practical laws when we do Kiddush, when we, you know, uh wear really nice clothes, when we eat good food, all the, the Shabbos meals, th this is how we sanctify the Shabbos in a way of remembering the Shabbos. But then what's Shamor? Shamor is the idea of of, uh, of guarding the Shabbos, refraining from doing work, refraining of doing um, th things we shouldn't do, uh, turning on the lights, going to work, things like that. And now on an internal level, what does this mean? So the internal level of Zahol, which is the positive aspect of keeping Shabbos, is really focusing our intention, focusing our thoughts and our minds on godly things, on trying to like really uh, be in this like meditative state. And the internal level of Shamol, the internal level of guarding, is to actually stop ourselves from speaking about mundane affairs, being an, a, refraining from speaking too much in uh, about physical things. It's not like that we're not allowed to talk on Shabbos at all, but the things we should talk about should really ideally be things that concern more spiritual kind of ideas. And in this way, we really emulate God, uh, who God also refrained from speaking on Shabbos and went into this more internal state. And the final words are kizelu matze that this opposite the other, meaning to say that like uh, if if God forbid if a person does engage in like more material affairs on Shabbos and talks about things that don't have to do with Shabbos, this is like the antithesis of what Shabbos is all about, which is all about resting and refraining from thought and meditation and all of that. So that's the end of the Tanya. That is it. It's very, very cool. We made it here. Thank you again, everybody, for following me, for uh, listening to me. And tomorrow, God willing, we're going to be starting this whole cycle anew for another time. Please share this podcast with other people. And please continue to follow my work. Um, I, after finishing this this podcast, This is the, those of you that have been following me for a while will know that this is actually the second round of the Tanya that we've learned. The first round, the first time around was a leap year. So the Tanya is divided up a little bit differently. And then this time around, it's a regular year. So uh, to keep you guys up to date with my plans right now. So I do hope to continue putting out this podcast, you know, on a daily basis. Um, I won't be doing new episodes for the Tanya, but I most likely will be doing some more podcast episodes on some other topics. I'm not quite sure yet uh, what direction I wanna go with that yet. And uh, I also want to really take the time now to really focus on the book, the book that accompanies this podcast. So stay tuned for more updates on that. Uh, if you'd like to join my WhatsApp group or follow me on Facebook or subscribe on YouTube or, you know, all the other ways like that, that you can stay up to date on uh, what I've been doing. Um, you can also 
check my website, itistop.com, where you can also support the project. It'd be, mean a lot to me if you could financially support the project. Um, as of now, aside from the few little sponsors that I get for episodes here and there, all this entire podcast is self-funded and there are expenses, believe it or not, in putting together a podcast, subscription fees, equipment fees, things like that. And of course, there's my time. And I do hope to hire an assistant at some point too uh, to help with more of the administrative stuff so I could focus more on the learning and the teaching. So if you'd like to support the podcast, please go to itistaught.com and, um, and show your support that way. And of course, give it a five-star review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, however you like to give those reviews. So thanks so much again and um, till next time. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Avraham Yitzchak ben Benjamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, Please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.